Hey guys, Joe here, and obviously that was a little bit of a funny thing that I just felt like doing, but not too exaggerated. Uh, if you recall from this video, I did a attempt at running quad SLIs on this motherboard, which belongs to a friend of mine. This is an Alienware R4 with a i7-3820, not a K or anything like that, but it was overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz, and it didn't work well. The main reason being is because those cards require PCIe Gen 3, that motherboard only supported PCIe Gen 2, so it was not working. However, the motherboard that's currently in there is an MSI Gaming G45, which is SLI and Crossfire ready, and supports Quad SLI, which is the most important thing right now. So, the specs on the system are, it's a i5-4690K, 16 gigabytes of RAM at 1866 megahertz, and currently two GTX 690s. So as you can see, they're running in Quad SLI now. Surprisingly, the 850 power supply seems to be able to power it just fine. Why am I even making this video when I already tried it? Well, it's because it works on this system, so I want to show you what you can actually expect out of a bonker setup like this, as well as compare it to GTX 980. This is just a superclocked GTX 980. It's not a 980 Ti. It's nothing like that. However, I have found that an overclocked 690 is almost the equal to an overclocked 980 at least in benchmarking, and that is an important thing to remember as we go through this video. As other YouTubers have done videos on three-way, four-way, 1080s, Titans, and the like, you'll know that fewer and fewer games and companies and motherboard makers are actually supporting three- and four-way SLI. In fact, there are some things that won't even work when you're trying to run three- or four-way SLI. So I went through my admittedly small collection of games and I went and I did benchmark tests and fire strike tests and the relevant synthetic stuff and gameplay tests using the 690s and a pair of 980s. I sold a couple of 980s so I'm down to just my personal one right now but that's okay because I got the data I needed before I got rid of the cards. Now for your reference or for your information this is overclocked 100 megahertz, those are overclocked 100 megahertz. So in terms of the overclock, I applied the same overclock to both cards, or both groups of cards. And I was actually pretty surprised, and I'll kind of put them up here as I'm talking, but in 3D Mark Fire Strike, I just ran Fire Strike, I didn't run Time Spy because it doesn't suggest Time Spy because even though those are technically four gigabyte cards, each GPU only has two gigabytes of VRAM. So when the computer detects what it is, it just thinks it has four two gigabyte cards in it. Whereas this card is a four gigabyte card and it shows as a four gigabyte card. In SLI, the GTX 980s in Fire Strike returned a score of 29,993 which I think is pretty good considering that a single card is at 15,650. So it's almost a 100% scaling in Fire Strike for the 980s. In terms of the 690s, believe it or not, it scales almost exactly the same. A single 690 with both, obviously, chips enabled will return a Fire Strike score of 15,100 and a combined four-way SLI score of 29,453. So it's only a few hundred points behind the 980. I also did some other tests. Obviously, uh, one that actually works well, believe it or not, is Batman Arkham Knight. Now, the game is in no way optimized. However, it clearly shows the difference between SLI and a strong single card solution. When you run the benchmarks on the quad SLI setup, it will hit 100 and 105 FPS with the four cards enabled. However, when you try to play the game at the settings you can play it on this card, which is 1080p, everything set to high, desync off in order to lock in 90 frames per second, the GTX 690s 
will fall completely on their face. It actually makes the game completely unplayable because it's trying to use one GPU and two gigabytes of VRAM. Now, obviously, if I drop all the settings down, it will run the game, but not incredibly well because it's trying to use one of the GPUs and two gigabytes of VRAM, so it'd be like running with a single 680, which will run, but not well. And using GeForce Experience itself, I can't optimize it to use more than one GPU, so there's nothing you can really do about that. With the GTX 980, I was able to complete the benchmarks, but keep in mind that when you record using MSI Afterburner, at least in the Batman benchmarks, I was losing 30% of my frames because I was recording it. And it actually is the same way in Grand Theft Auto V, where I was at 110 to 120 without recording, but as you can see in the recording, the average FPS was around 80 to 90 FPS. So quite a big difference when you're recording using MSI Afterburner versus when you aren't. So let's launch Grand Theft Auto V and see what happens. Hi mom, I'm sitting through a lot of menus. Now these are the exact same settings I use on the GTX 980 with one GPU and four gigabytes of available VRAM. Would you load? So the game is loaded and as you can see, we're getting stutters, we're getting frame drops, and the game actually just completely froze. There we go. So let's see what happens when we go outside. So it's not doing too bad, but you will see once we start getting some uh, opponents, such as Policia, that it's going to start stuttering. And you can see it's actually already dropped down to 80. Don't bulletproof your buffalo. Jeez Louise, man. So now that we're in the city, moving around, shooting people, you'll see that the frame rate is actually, well, when it doesn't do that, is in the 70 to 80 range, whereas on the single graphics card, running at 1500 megahertz, was actually returning over 100 FPS in this exact same spot. Is this unplayable? No, no, it's completely playable at 80 plus FPS. On most people's monitors, you're going to have a perfectly enjoyable time. Even if I overclock this monitor to 75 Hertz, it will still be an absolutely playable experience, except for the stutters that occur every now and then when it's loading in thing. But again, this is a four card solution and it's not doing any better than a single card. You can see how bad it's actually even stuttering on the uh, pause menu for Christ's sakes. In Grand Theft Auto V on one GTX 980, it will run completely smooth, 1080p, everything maxed out except for obviously anisotropic filtering because that is a big hit. And it will run without recording in the 100 to 115 FPS range. Again, everything maxed, very high and ultra. In the case of the 690s, it stutters again because you are again faced with a two gigabyte frame buffer. Yes, you have four GPUs, and technically you have that many's for the RAM, but that many's is only two gigabytes over four GPUs, and it actually introduced quite a bit of stuttering. I was surprised. In CSGO, 1980 gave me better frame rates than Quad SLI. In Superposition Benchmark, it will only use one card. Sometimes it will use two based on what I was seeing on the score. In Tomb Raider, and this is Tomb Raider 2013, it's not Rise of the Tomb Raider or anything, it was scaling pretty well. It was maxing out the available frame rate, but 1980 will do that as well. One of the other things you have to keep in mind is you're going to wind up with a jungle sandwich because even though this is an 850 watt power supply and I have three separate available video cables, including two modular and the one that's integrated into the power supply, they are all four plus three pin because this is not like a 80 plus platinum thousand watt power supply, it's an 850 watt power supply. So I'm actually boogering together a lot of cables just to power these cards. And it's not a power delivery problem because it's completely stable 
other than the stuttering from the lack of the VRAM. But yeah, this is one other thing you have to keep in mind. Additionally, you won't be running a side panel on this setup because it will be running way too hot. These graphics cards will get up to 85 degrees Celsius. And I think you will agree that is way too hot. Now, obviously I could disassemble these cards, change the thermal paste, and probably get them to drop a little bit. But I think the ultimate way to cool them down would be to water cool them. And I don't even know where to get water cooling blocks for these cards, so. It's a little bit of an academic uh, question anyways, because these particular cards are actually sold and on their way to a new buyer. And that's why I'm doing this video before I send them out. That is hot. So keep in mind, this consumes much less power than this. This runs as good as this. This runs a lot cooler than this, but this looks really badass. If I do another P5 or a P3 build, I'll probably stick a 690 on there just because it looks cool. And when it's sitting like this in a case, be it a P3, P5, or even my NZXT stuff, it will run cooler because it's getting direct fresh air from something that isn't a cavity. As Brian from Tech yes City likes to call it, it's a jungle sandwich. But yeah, you can see how, how crazy it gets on top of the wired non-modular PCIe connectors, four pin and six pin, I have to use two more cables, which were modular, as well as a dual six pin to eight pin, because to power two 690s, you need four eight pin connectors, which makes sense because you're running four GPUs. It's just a bit insane, that's all. But yeah, it's good to have modular power supplies just for that reason. So in conclusion, I would say it isn't worth it unless you can get these cards for next to nothing, which I do because I will buy a bunch of 980s, sell those, and the money I make from those will more than cover the cost of 690s. That is my end goal when I'm done buying all this guy's inventory is I want a couple of 980s and a couple of 690s, mainly for collecting purposes and to use in other builds because one 690 will work on a more modern board versus two 690s on an old board. So yeah, that's about it. If you have any questions, leave those down below. If you have any comments, leave those down below. If you would like to maybe become a Patreon, click up there. You can click over here to subscribe. 614 subscribers. Thank you guys very much. And you can click over here to watch another video or where my hand is. And until next time, I'll talk to you later. There we are. Back to normal. Much better looking in the case here.